I'm going live on Facebook. All right. Now Facebook is live. Um, and I am seeing Pastor Paul and I got Pastor Herbert McCoy. And then I have our guest speaker, Mark Miles. All right, Mark, give us a wave. Hallelujah. All right, now let's do a mic check. Pastor uh, Paul, see if we can hear you tonight. Testing one, two, three. All right. And Pastor Herbert, can we hear you? Yeah, y'all holding anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. We are holding the Holy Spirit. We are in the bosom of the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. All right. Let's go all now. All he had to do was say testing. That's that was all he had to say. That's what Just he said. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go Lord. to the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. Lord, we just lift you up and give you all the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. You are so worthy, Lord, and we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, to anoint uh, each of us on the line tonight that a word might be said, that somebody might be encouraged, that a word might be said, the Heavenly Father, that will strengthen somebody. A word, dear Lord, that it might even save somebody. And we thank you for that right now. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a day we've never seen before, and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Now, Lord, we just ask you one more thing. Touch this technology. Touch it right now in the name of Jesus. Let nothing happen out of your will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Now, Pastor Paul, um, I need you to give me a song real quick. Okay. I know you weren't prepared for that, but I need a song yes, for yes, some. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he prepared. Go on, do what God play on your heart, man. Amen, amen, amen. We'll just make sure we'll uh, do this real simple and and uh, real simple and quick. I may not be there at anything, nor have the best of anything. Sometimes. I feel that I'm the least of all, but I know someone yes. who has everything, and that someone is my riches. Oh, I'm happy. Just to know that I his time. His name is Jesus. Righteous son. The valley. Yes, yes. The bright and more dark. His name is Jesus, and he's my thing. Hallelujah. And I am happy just to know that I his child. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. So, Pastor Paul, for some reason, your your mic is dropping out. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, or it's got some kind of delay. But but we're gonna roll on tonight. Thank you for that that song. Um, now let let me introduce my guest speaker um, that we're going to interview tonight. Um, first of all, I, I like to tell a man's um, 
what he does for a living. Uh, he is a certified public accountant, um, CPA. He's a graduate of the University of Missouri, and he's presently working uh, in, in, in uh, Ferguson, Missouri, to help Ferguson, Missouri um, get back on solid footing. He, he is a father of, of, of three children, I think I'm calling that right, uh, uh, that, oh, well, no, it's really four children. I'm getting my numbers right now, two boys and one girl. Two boys and two girls. And um, three, the younger three, uh, the boy who is named Mark Miles Jr. and the girl Catherine and the other daughter um, Allison are all in college right now. And so he, he's got a, got a heavy load to carry <laughs> at this point in his life to have three of his children in college all at the same time. And so uh, we're going to be talking with him tonight about being a father. Uh, um, I, I'll, I'll just say this up front. He, he's now a divorced father. Um, uh, his, him and his wife divorced on last year, so we can get that on out, out front. <laughs> uh, uh, so, um, He's going to talk a lot about, you know, what it means to be a father who has adult children and the mom and dad are separated. Uh, but the, here's the thing. They just not married. You know, they raising their children together still. So I, I, I wanted to, to have him come on to talk about, it, you know, from that standpoint and and any other aspects that he wants to bring up, because it's very important for us to understand that papa don't take no mess. Well, the papa and mama together or not, it, it, it's important that we as men raise our children. And it don't stop when they turn 18, raising children, your children, the, 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 the ones of your lawn, that's a continuous lifetime duty and job. So at this point, uh, we want Mr. Miles uh, to come on and just say, hey, how you doing? Hello, and welcome, everybody. <laughs> good evening, gentlemen. Uh, good evening, guests and uh, onlookers. I look forward hey. to this conversation. Um, you know, I know two of the gentlemen here, we grew up together. You know, my big brother, Herbert, and my brother, Anthony, Mark. Uh, I've just met Paul, I think, through a phone conversation, so I look forward to talking to you and, and so forth. So let's get started. All right. Amen. Amen. Well, um, the first question that we normally ask everybody that comes on to, to the, uh, the broadcast is, is a question about just tell us about your, your, your work. What are you doing right now uh, as far as uh, your work, uh, both in uh, your, your daily job or business where you're, you're bringing in cash flow? but then your overall work in the community? Well, I've been working with municipalities probably for the last 18 years. As you said, mentioned earlier, I'm a certified public accountant. Uh, my expertise is in governmental and nonprofit uh, finance and accounting. Uh, I've got a little economic development chops just from working in the field. Uh, I've been doing finance. I've never done anything else. So I've been in finance for 35 years. Um, so what I try to do is when I go into a city, because I spent several years uh, consulting, and um, what I try to do is help them uh, simplify, and uh, the, the new term people are talking about now is um, transparency. Uh, create a, uh, an, an environment of trans financial transparency. Now, tr I'm going to go into this a little bit. Transparency is important because it really is a matter of making sure that your constituents can understand the complexities of, give, like, let's say, a municipality, municipal finances. You know, it's important that they understand these things because their tax dollars are going to it. Their, their well-being and the environment in which they're raising their children is impacted by that particular entity that's taking care of their city. 
Mm -hmm. So these kinds of things, you know, this is what I've been focused on, and this is what I've done for the last, like I said, about 18 years. And, and so I've gotten to a point where I have a certain comfort level in dealing with different levels. I've worked with the city of St. Louis, which is the biggest city, and I've worked with cities with maybe 100 citizens. So I've got the, the gambit uh, in terms of complexity and or size and, and budget size and so on and so forth. So that's, that's what I do. And right. to take it further, um, even in, in retirement, I intend to consult, you know, and help cities, and especially black cities, because we have a tendency in our, in our black community to not understand and not have the grasp of some of the nuances and finances, you know, especially when it comes to complex organizations. So that's what I do. Okay, okay. Anybody got any questions? Follow up on that? Oh, hard. There you go. Get your mic unmuted. <laughs> he, he's, moved, he's muted. You muted her, but you got a question. Yeah, I, I, I know. Uh, I, I'm just. I'm, I'm sitting here. I'm thinking about Mark Ma. That ain't what we called it when we was kids. Thinking about no, but see, I don't, don't want to ask Crumb or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, that is a good one, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta leave Crumble alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we ain't. No one might tell you something. We ain't gonna mess with Crumble. Yeah. It's good to see you, old man. Yeah, it's good to see you too. So good to know what you're doing. And, and doing what you do, dealing with finance. And dealing with finances, man, it's, it is so difficult sometimes to know about budgeting, to drive fiscal budgeting. What, 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 what is the, what, what, what is one of the most difficult? I don't know, you can't say that. <laughs> I'm asking you. Your jazz. Yeah, what 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 is one of the most difficult places that you've had to get budgeting actually going for an entity? I will ask it like that, Mr. Well, Miles. I'll put it to you like this and I won't <laughs> say no names. Okay. Uh but I've seen and the thing that really can interfere with you know, effectively, um, obviously, this is uh, this is an obvious answer. Effectively, budgeting and managing your finances is corruption. Uh, now, and then the second the second hardest hurdle is distrust. So, and, and, and to give it to you, like if you've got officials that don't trust each other and their political odds, it can have the same impact or, or close to the same impact as corruption. You know, corruption is insidious, of course. And uh, you can't, because it's on purpose that it's mismanaged. That's what you usually find, okay? Uh, then distrust is borderline, it's on like the borderline of corruption. Because somebody's withholding something from somebody else, and both sides or all three or all three sides are doing these kinds of back room, back door, back biting types of things, and so they, they can't work as a team, and they're only working with one group. So I mean, those are probably the most difficult things I've seen, and 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 a lot of times people are corrupt because they're ignorant. They don't know how glaring it is when somebody competent looks at it. This is why they get busted. Okay? Did mm -hmm. that answer your question? Or... No, can't hear you. You're on mute again. Herbert? Do you ever work with any churches? Uh, not really. Let me think. Let me think. Uh, I can't think of any. I've worked with nonprofits, which are, you know, it's a similar, you know, it's 501c3 yeah. or 504. Um, so I've had experience with non all kinds of nonprofits, but churches, 
Yeah, it's kind of funny. I'm just going to be straight with you. A lot of times churches shy, shy away from that real high technical aspect of finances because I don't know why. Okay, I can't speak to it because I haven't really dealt with it. But a lot of times you don't, they tend to shy away from that sophistication. That's been my experience. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm not, I'm sorry. One, one, I, I got to follow that with this. Yeah. Uh, I'm not talking about the sophistication. I'm talking about, I, I'm planning on getting this in, in in the next year. This is how I'm going to get it in. This is how I'm going to spend it. And this is what happened last year. So, and I know mm -hmm. this right here is probably going to work. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I, and I know you've done that with cities. Yeah. Where, where they set up a budget. But, you know, we, we're, 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 I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a little bit into the church. Hold on just a second. I got something on the stove I got to address. Hold on. Just a second. Yeah, yeah. So, so what, 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 um, I see is, is he's, is he's leaving right now. Uh, he, he's talking about in general churches, uh, um, Church, uh, can I, let me, let me get, let me go yeah, back yeah, to I, I, I got to say this. Churches tend to don't want that accountability. That's correct. Ah, you that, said that, it, that, you made it clear. <laughs> you, you, a lot of times, and they, and because they're not scrutinized, they don't have to be. Unless, unless you start getting into grants and so forth where you've got re reporting requirements, if you just require to report to the people who actually, you know, your, your congregation, and usually there's a different kind of relationship there, you know, that demand for that accountability is, is not there. You're right. And so that's, so churches, you know, and then I think once you get to a certain level, level or size in the church, then it becomes necessary. Most churches, a lot of them are small. So the cost of services that I might provide may be uh, uh, a little difficult. They'd rather pay a bookkeeper, yeah. you know? They'd rather pay a, 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 a somebody in the congregation, which they can do at a lower level. Because when you start dealing with professionals, as you know, it's you know it's, it can be costly, and okay. that's not in the budget. Okay. okay. You so know where are you congregated? Where do you congregate? Well, I I tend to visit with my wife, or I might go here or there, but I don't do a lot of congregating. Okay. So. All right. Right. But you're not there to hold anybody accountable. That, that that's the thing I'm I'm I, I'm asking you. Where, right. Where I don't. Uh, well, no, I, no. You're right. That's a good. That's a different angle. But I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Uh, if I was a regular member, I, I, obviously, I'm a see it. Okay. I would recognize if there was any issues, and of yeah. course, I would always be available. You know, but I'm available for. Even if I'm not congregating, if it's somebody, it's a family member, well, I'm available to take, if you want me to take a look at it, I'll look at it. You know, I don't have that problem. That's sort of a way to contribute. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, um, but yeah, if I was, if I was a, had a regular church, I would probably provide those services to a certain extent. Okay. So I'm going from a question to a statement, then I'm going to leave it alone. There's a, <laughs> there's a church that needs you to be there. There's a congregation that may that need you to be there as a servant. Mm -hmm. I ain't talking about getting paid. I'm talking about as a servant. Because yeah, in, in, in a church, you can't pay somebody to do what you do for the eyes that you have. And and, and I make that statement to you. Uh, I hear that. That that, yeah. that that you're needed. And and I offer this to you to finish my statement. Uh, you have sons, you have children, and and, and if they watch you, uh, they get an opportunity to see uh, uh, what it is they need to do later on, and what their kids need to do. Uh, so I, I offer you that, and 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 I just I just make a statement there, and and I'll, I'll say that to Crumb. Okay, I hear that. I hear that. I hear that, Junebug. I hear that. <laughs> Now, 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 let let uh, Mark McCoy follow up on that. Uh, there's a church that needs you in Huntsville, Alabama, uh -huh. and, and, and 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 one this church needs your physical presence oh, in Huntsville, wow. Alabama. 
uh, so you can serve in your proper position <laughs> as an yeah. example <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. for generations to come. I, I'm yeah. going to stop right there. That's just a statement. You, you don't have to respond. I, that's just coming out of my, 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 my belly here. Come on. Now, does, that church, does that church have any technology that he yeah. would be able to? Yeah, he, oh, okay. he, uh, yeah, uh, he, uh, he can do it remotely, but, uh, but, but when we're physically together, it, it's going to be so much better. <laughs> now, point now, taken, my brother. Point taken. <laughs> Come on, Pastor Paul. I know you got a question. Uh, yes, I do. In regards to what you were just we were talking about in, in the uh, in the area uh, that was corruption, with the intentional uh, sabotage that happens for the benefit of the uh, for, for the benefit of others, because I've dealt with that uh, even in my position. Brother Paul, uh, I, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Really, you are? So, yeah, um, I don't know. Let me see about, uh, give me one second. Let me look at this because um, I want to make sure this is clear. There you go. There you go. You can hear me now? Yes. Yeah. That's much okay. better. Cool. Um, in regards to, as I said before, in regards to the, uh, the area of corruption, distrust, and the basis of accountability, mm -hmm. since we are, I mean, I, I understand that in your professional position, as a CPA, you have to deal with that on a consistent basis, especially during the end of year, during uh, the time, uh, the end of the quarters and annually. Now, let's, if you don't mind, let's, if we can shift to your, your relationship with your children as a father. Mm -hmm. Being as we are a father, we have to deal with our children sometimes intentionally sabotaging <laughs> themselves, and their sibling relationships. Yeah, and the relationship between their parents, mm -hmm. as well as as well as you know, when that happens, that builds a level of distrust in the family. Mm -hmm. And then, as you know, with children, children do not like to be held accountable or do not seek do not see accountability in their actions. So, as as a father, how do you establish that? How do you feel like you establish that with your with your children? How do you bring uh, that, that level of, uh, how do you bring that when you deal with that at, at your personal life or your family life? How do you deal with it there? I mean, just know, as a, just as a general, uh, just as a, uh, you know, a general statement on this, to kind of relate well, first. You know, our, um, you know, even now, and like, like, as mentioned before, we're divorced, but um, we have always been very open with our children with appropriate content. Um, my wife is a more de more devoted in terms of um, spirituality than I am, and so that I, I I made sure that was supported, and my children were raised as Christian. So there was a certain level, and still is a certain level of uh, uh, obviously openness and decency. Uh, that we made sure was maintained in our household. And certain things like um, backbiting and lying and those things were completely not tolerated in my, my home. Uh, so at the same time, you, you weren't squelched. My children were not squelched in expressing how they felt and or what they thought was unfair. Uh, one of the things I think sometimes parents do is they don't want to hear where they're making mistakes. I want to hear it. I want to be accountable to them. Even though my word is final, you are an important human being. This is the message that I sent to them. You're an important human being. Your point of view is important. And raising girls, it was important for me to make them understand that there is nothing in the world you can't do. I'm not going to favor this boy because he's my namesake. I'm not going to push you down and make you somebody's vessel. So that was the way we dealt with it. We always also had uh, family talks every week. 
And it wasn't like a planned thing. It's just something that sort of evolved with us because of the comfort level that our kids had growing up under us. Okay? And it wasn't, and I'm not saying we were perfect because, you know, me and Stephanie fight like cats and dogs sometimes. But there was, there was a certain thing that you just didn't do. You didn't harm the family. You know, you didn't. When it was time for me to go, I just left before it got so bad where it would harm them. Okay? So that's really how we dealt with that. I'd never tolerated any child hurting any child of mine. Cause they're all my babies. Yeah. So that was that was you know that's really and I'm passionate about that. Okay. That's a, that's real serious to me. So like for instance, it's so serious to me that I would get angry at people outside of the home because if you do something against me, you're doing something against them and they're innocent. So you got something to deal with if you are trying to affect me and it's going to flow through to them. You really, if it's just me, I can handle it. But if it's going to go through to them, you're dealing with something. So, you know, that was, I, I've always, like I say, I'm a passionate father. You know, we, I, it's the best job I ever had. And, I, you know, I look at my fruits now. I'm very proud of them. They're good kids. They're, they're better kids than I was. <laughs> I'm by <Yeah>. far. <laughs> by far. <laughs> okay. And that yeah. was, a, that's, that right there was an accomplishment for me. You know, these two brothers, uh, Herbert and, and Mark, can attest to the kind of kid I was. Crumble. And so, yeah, it's crumble. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they, you know, I made sure that, uh, you know, you got to look crumble. But, you know, they, they grew up proper and they grew up respected and they understand so the respect. Could you beat him up? Could, could, you, could, could you beat him up? Did I, did I beat who up? Could, could you? Could you beat up Mark? Mark? Can I beat? Can I beat Mark? Beat up Mark Crumble. You oh, better answer oh. that right now. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. What'd you say now? Did I beat up Mark Crumble? I, I said, can you? Can I beat up? Mark he meddling. No, see, he meddling. He meddling. He's saying, can Mark Crumble beat up Mark my uh, Mark McCoy? He meddling. He meddling. Oh, he didn't brought that up. Yeah. No. <laughs> see, 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 yeah, see. I can. Yeah. See, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Let's Mark just mute him and let's yeah. move on. Yeah, no, no. See, see, that that that's that's something I, I want to relate to. You know, he, he meddling, but we came up in our neighborhood. Uh, Mark, uh, Miles, and I have been knowing each other for all our lives. We were raised up as brothers, okay? And diapers. Uh, and diapers. And, and, and we all, you know, I had an older brother, he had an older brother, uh, uh, and then, you know, they would try to make us compete against one another in everything. <laughs> and, and, and so because of that, we, we did have times where we fought. But we made a decision at five years old that we would never fight each other again. <laughs> and, and we made a pact, and that pact held true still to this day. I have not had to whoop him for <laughs> over 52 years. <laughs> So, 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 <laughs> that, that's just a little levity. That's just a little levity. But, but now, but the, but now the, the first five years was something else. And I, yeah, they were pretty hard. They were pretty hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, 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 and I, I bring that up because at that time, Mark and Stay, you know, Crumble and, and, and Statue was a, a bit smaller than you. But boy, I tell you, y'all used to scrap, you know, and they were five on years old. And, and as I hear him talk now, you know, I know that he knows how to stand up and fight because I've seen him fight back then. So the things that he fights for and the things that he fights about now, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so proud uh, to hear him talk about uh, 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 what he's doing and, and talking about his family 
uh, the, the thing that I'm thinking is that at this time, being in in divorce, that sounds like a painful endeavor. It, it sounds like something that you got to scrap with practically on a daily basis, not not just once a day, but it's things that you have to go through now. And, and I, I wanted you to talk about some of that uh, now, because now, not now, everybody. But now, before you, divorce. before you answer that, before you answer that, before you answer that, let me let me let me give some some background so you don't have to give it. Um, um, uh, Mark Miles is married or was married to Stephanie Anthony Miles. Stephanie and and and, and I have known each other since we were probably about eight or nine years old. Uh, uh, and, um, her father was a pastor and, and, and a very, uh, 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 strong leader in East St. Louis. Stephanie now is, is, uh, she has her own television broadcast called yeah. Smile. Okay. Smile. And, and, and Smiles. And, and, and it is a syndicated broadcast that's being syndicated all over the United States. So that that is that is who he married, a very strong and powerful woman. Um uh, now with that being said, um all good things sometimes have to come to some kind of end. And I'm gonna leave it right there and let him deal with the hurt and the the, the part that that uh, that he's dealing with in the fight of of dealing with divorce. Okay, before before you before you talk, brother, before you talk, brother Mark, let me um let me say this. Let me add to that. Uh, uh, add to what uh, Pastor Mark was saying. Because one of the things, uh, first off, I, I I got a chance. I got a, a chance to meet your wife um, some years ago, and she she had she's very busy. I will say that extremely busy. Um, let's look at this, if you don't mind. Could we look at this? In the uh, let's look at this in the aspect of the CPA. Two of the basic things that you do yearly or quarterly. Let's look at this concept of what what was requested, and and there's a reason why I'm asking this. Let's look at it as a uh, in the form of a balance sheet, and also in the form of a, P, a P and L state. What, <laughs> what do you feel like? You're, let's look at the concept of in your relationship with with your uh, with your former wife and your children. The assets, the liabilities, and the profit, and the loss. Look at it from that perspective, if you don't mind, because I, one of the things I, I do when I preach, I like to take the real world things and, and apply them to a person's life spiritually. And one of the things I, I uh, as an example, one of the things I talked about was uh, the concept of the, of the peaks and the troughs in macroeconomics and to understand the concept of supply and demand when it comes to the word of God in people's lives. So if you wouldn't mind, if you want to just take a moment, just look at that concept and if you just to kind of put it in that perspective, the assets that have happened, your liabilities and your in that in that form in that portion of your relationship, and what do you feel was a profit and what do you feel was a loss? Well and we'll go from there. I'll stop right there. That's you know, that's really what you're after, Brother Paul, uh to put it like that. Uh first of all, Man, divorce is a thing. Hard thing. Hard thing. Hard. Yes, it is. We sit. We sit. Well, you have to understand something. We we had a amicable divorce, in the sense that in a in that we didn't we weren't cussing each other out or all of that. We sit in court next to each other and discuss things about the children and bills and what have you. So in a sense, a part of our relationship never left. It has not left to this day. Um, there's, you know, certain things that a husband and wife shares that we don't share anymore. But um, if if something came up, like today, I'll give an example. First person she's gonna call is me. First person I'm gonna call is her. So you can imagine the boo-hoos we had breaking that bond that I'm not coming home anymore. 
Okay. So that was extremely, extremely difficult. What the, but brother Paul, now to go to yours, the balance sheet is half because we are not combining our resources like we did. So the assets have been reduced. Also the liabilities, not to the same extent. The profit or what I would consider a profit from this endeavor, this final chapter of this endeavor is the pain of a relationship that's not working. Okay. So that is, that is the loss the pro or that is the profit. The pain is gone. The profit is I still have a friend for life. I'm, I'm so glad that she is the mother of my children. That was a blessing. And sometimes people can be good fathers and good mothers and good friends and bad spouses. Okay, because that requires some other things other than doing what you're supposed to do. So we didn't have a problem with doing what we were supposed to do. Okay. It was the other things, those, those, those soft skills. And I'm going to leave it there. Okay. And, and I appreciate that. I, I'm hoping that that didn't throw you too far off. Because no, I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay. I, I, because I wanted to tell you all, I mean, when you asked, when this question came up, I wanted to tell you all, because it's really not a, it's, you know, we were married for 20 years. This wasn't easy. Of course it's not. You know, I'm, so, and it's a very, very serious thing. It's a very serious thing, but here's the thing. You don't want to never get to the point where you're putting your hands on each other, you know, where you, you're doing things and worse than now you're playing the kids against you and all of that, you know. So to avoid those kinds of things and to avoid that real super dark place, you know, I I, I stepped away. And there it is. So, but yeah, man, it's, it's, it's a death. It's a death. Ain't no question about it. Right. And you cry like a baby. Yeah, you do. And, and, and I think that if a, um, if we look at those uh, if you, by at what you were saying gives a gives a um, hopefully a good perspective to even those that are listening and maybe watching to understand that there will be I mean it, it you will you will profit from these things because as the word says all things work together for good for them that love God sir sure. and there will be a loss sometimes it's it's it may be something simple or substantial. Yeah. But God provides not only the increase but the balance, and that's the reason why I was I was uh, stating that okay. is just okay. to get that um, get okay. that on record, not not to delve into your your yeah, uh, yeah. personal because the truth is we've all of us we've all had situations where we knew that it was time to walk away. Right. And right. I am a I'm a firm believer, um, and, it, and I'll and say never. That, what you have to understand, especially when you get into it and, be, and it becomes real and becomes family, you never really walk away. It's a different, you, you, you step back. Right. You step right. back. Okay. And, right. and, and, but you don't never lose that support and, and all the other things, but there's a, you, you, there's a, the intimate space, you move out of that. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you on the fact that yeah, we can be, we can be good friends to people. We oh, can yeah. be good parents to our children. We can be good cousins, good fathers, good mothers, and whatnot. Yeah. But yeah. good spouses, yeah. it's a different yeah. dynamic. And sometimes we can do that, or sometimes we can't. Now, it doesn't mean that you are a bad person, nor nor her. It doesn't. Oh, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Shows that you. You and your ex wife had to make a decision and it was not easy. Yeah. But it had to be made. It had to be made. And a lot of people, as you said, a lot of people in changing the concept, because I'm a firm believer, and I was going to say this that a husband, uh, I'm a firm believer that when a man, a husband starts to hit, starts to make the desire to put his hands on his wife or vice versa, to me, she is no longer his wife. She is right. something else. That's a whole right. other thing. 
Right, and and it goes vice versa. And yeah. you know, the word of God tells us husband must love their wife. Yeah. And it, it doesn't say hit them when they feel it's necessary. Right. And that was the reason why I was saying this, just to get that, to put that into perspective uh, of what you do as a CPA and how it applies to your personal life. Right. Because everything we do in our business life can apply to our personal life in some way, shape, or form. Say, yeah, yeah. You, you could use, at least from a metaphor standpoint, and this is the way we were taking it, uh, we can kind of break that down. You know, here, you know, the difficulty is that everybody don't know what a P&L is. So, you know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. And hopefully, you know, what I, what I just gave you was, um, it, it was good for everybody who heard it. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. that's, that's yeah. what, you know, that's why I just dug into my heart and put that out there for people to know that, you know, life is not black and white. It's gray. It's it's a lot of it's so, shades so, of gray. So so now so, this is half of half of 2018 is gone. Half, right. Half of it, half of it is all gone. And and I'm wondering, you know, I, I've read in the Bible where it says a man that signs a wife signs a good thing. Yeah. Are you looking, brother? Man. <laughs> 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 We want to hear from Mark Miles. <laughs> we don't want to hear from Mark Crumble. <laughs> well, you know, I, I marriage was not bad. I, I actually something I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed most of it, and I think that's the proper way to live. I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so okay. T tell us tell us about your children. And 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 as I stated you you know, you and Stephanie have three together, then you have uh one earlier. I have two. two, I have two. two. That's right, two. Okay. I have so, two. so so and so start start with the oldest two and then come to uh the younger three. Well, I got two older boys. Uh, my oldest son is autistic and he's institutionalized. And so he, you know, he lives his life. Uh, he's 36 years old. Um, so he's, you know, he's, he's barely functional. My second oldest son, uh, he's a smart kid, got into a little trouble. Uh, he's got a good heart. He's got four children, so I'm a grandfather. Uh, and he's doing the best he can and, you know, growing up as a man. He's a good man. He's a good man. Um, my oldest girl, who is sitting right next to me, uh, I'm going to let her say hi. Come on, come on, show your face. Hey, beautiful. <laughs> so she's studying microbiology at Western Illinois University. Um, next year is her last year. The kid, smart, brilliant. Um, stays her, keeps her nose clean, stays out of trouble. Very proud of my children. My son Mark is uh, studying to be a screenwriter and um, movie producer. What? Screenwriter, I know that, at Columbia College of Chicago. Uh, he's extremely talented. I don't know where he got it from because it wasn't me. Um, he's smart, brilliant kid, good kid. Uh, my baby girl is studying philosophy at the University of Illinois. So I'm trying to push her into studying law because philosophy is a good basis for law. And obviously, if you have that kind of acumen, you're going to be a good writer. You can think about foundational things. You know, you've got a certain talent. And she's probably the best arguer out of all of us. <laughs> she's very concise with her arguments, very efficient. You know, of course, I test them. You know, uh, keep them sharp. You know, I, I test them and I give them as many ideas as I possibly can and uh, brain teasers. And I don't mean brain teasers like it, what is three plus four, but think about these concepts and these values and what are the implications of it and so on and so forth. 
because I always try to stimulate their minds. You know, I want the minds to be stimulated. Plus, I'm curious, so I want to see what they think. Yeah. So that's that's my key. Those are my children. Uh, yeah. You know. And and so and so you know the the thought that came to my mind since the divorce. Um, uh, describe the dynamic briefly. You know between you, your your uh, Stephanie, your ex wife, and 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 your three kids. That's her. Uh, you know, I mean, other than my presence on a regular basis, the the emotional dynamics I don't believe changed drastically. Mm-hmm. However, however, I think my youngest child was really affected initially. Um, you know, when a father is not in the home, the first thing you notice is security. The first thing that's missing, especially the children, is security. You, you see what I mean? In other words, somebody bang on the door and daddy at home, you ain't worried about it. Mm-hmm. Daddy got that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Papa don't so, take no mess. Papa don't take no mess. Okay, so 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 let me press. Let me press. I, I gotta. I, I, I gotta. Yeah, I, you know, I, I'm just. A, yeah, I heard your answer. You, you answered the question that I asked, and and now I got to press. Now that you had a little bit of time to just settle down a little bit, I I, I must press. I must press for the case because, you know, I, I you know I, as I said, he, he said that a man that find it. A wife finds a good thing. Are you going back to that? You going back I got to that? Too. I, I gotta press, man. I, I gotta press. I, I gotta press. So let me press this way. I, I gotta press this thing. Uh, <laughs> is it you, you you talked about debt? You talked about debt. And 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 to me, that seemed like there's some love here that will never ever end. It seemed that there was a time when you found a good thing, and that thing is still good. So, <laughs> press Herbert, press Jumba. So, <laughs> so, so I, I, yeah, I, I, I got to press this thing and, and, and just ask you, Crumble, you know. Is there a way that maybe everything is being held together in this wonderful universe by, you know, th- these three children that got all of this love that's into them, that their parents might might end their days as husband and wife? Is is there any? I, I, I'm 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 just asking a possibility. Just a suspicion. You know what? It's a possibility. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I I asked Crumble a question um, a week or so ago, and pressing that exact same point, but I was pressing it from a different view. View. I said, now, who watches over you um, when you get up in the morning? Who is the one checking on you? Now, 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 now. Let me let me say this. Okay, we're gonna have to move no, on okay. from this pretty soon. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> let, let me say this. Move on. All let right. Tell them, Crumble. Let me let me say this. Let me say this. All right. This. All right. Every morning. Every morning. For the last ten years, his wife. And I text each other every morning. I'm trying to figure out what that's all about, first of all. Because <laughs> that's my sister. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my sister. Right. And, 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 and that's what we've been doing. And so, when you know, uh, and when I told him and, and, and asked him this question, you, it, his answer, his answer, because I'm, I'm trying to get you out this spot here. All his right, answer, all right. His answer was, his answer was, oh, it's Stephanie. We 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 check on each other every day. All right. 
right. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave that right, all right there. All right. All right. <laughs> so, so, so now, so now, the the next question. The next question is, um, and even though you've been through a divorce, how? What is your advice to men that are listening now? on how to prepare for a fulfilling marriage and then have a fulfilling uh, relationship with their children. And, 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 knowing, and knowing that there may be a sense of failure on your part because the marriage ain't together now. But if you will, think about the good time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, obviously, the most important thing um, is that you are friends, best friends. That's the most important thing. And you're not friends till you capitulate to their bad habits and they capitulate to yours. You're friends because they help you manage your bad habits and you help them manage them and you're willing to listen. Okay, so that's the first thing. But friendship above all else, you have to have common interests. You have to have things that you both are interested in and interested in doing together. Okay, and it's gotta be more than one thing. You're gonna have your things that you do that are just the things that you do. But you, it, you know, Opposites attract, but they don't stick. That don't work. Y'all got to be of the same type of mind. Okay? Let your children grow. Give them structure, but don't squelch their voices. L raise them in a just home. That's, that's the term, a just home. So you don't say things like, I'm doing this, do this because I said so. Well, you didn't teach. Every time you discipline your child, you got an opportunity to teach them something. Okay? So you say, okay, now, I'm finna whoop that butt, but let me tell you why I'm doing this. Everybody, a lot, all of them smart parents know that. It's like, that's, you really that's don't how hate this case. Huh? That's well, how you know, I, well, see, we come up with that strap, but they told us. <laughs> See, a lot of times, I'm going to tell you something, a lot of times I heard, I'm going to whoop you so the police don't whoop you. I, I, I know you heard that. I'm going to whoop you right now so the police don't whoop you. But the thing is, is that you got to do a lot more talking and a lot less whooping. That's what I believe. Okay? All right. He's, these are reasonable people, reasonable people. So that's, I think, I think that's the way you got to deal with it. I think it's important I think that foundational relationship with the spouse, uh, if you manage that well, you know, even aspects of it, you're going to have a lot more success with your children, you know? All right. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, as, I, as I'm doing this, I'm, I, I, uh, I just sent a shout out to your brother, uh, Marlon uh, Thompson, and uh, I, I sent Marlon the link just in case he want to Time in on you. <laughs> That's my little brother. <laughs> That's your little brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Marlon, I know you're watching on, on Facebook, but if you want to hit that link I just sent you on Facebook and chime in with him, oh, man, let's go mess him up. But but, but let, let's go on uh, uh, to the next question. And this 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 question here requires you to, to really – uh, dig deep into a thought as a man. Uh, and, and this is the question. If you could go back in time and speak to your younger self at age 21, with all the knowledge and experience that you have, what would you say to yourself? The world ain't what you think it is. Okay. The world ain't what you think it is. All right. The world is not what they said it was. Okay. But you keep your integrity, 
you keep your honesty, you don't hurt nobody, you do your best, but it ain't fair and it ain't fun. <laughs> All right. You, 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 one, one of the things I heard one of my daughters say to me recently, she said, Daddy, uh, I don't want to be an adult. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it's not fun. And right. the show ain't fair. And so, so could you elaborate on that? I, I'm, I'm going to go more. deeper. I'm going to go deeper in this because you got to understand, and, and especially as you all are pastors, so you talk about this a lot. But God's world is a little different than man's world. A little? <laughs> okay, okay. God's world is different from man's world. And so you got to keep your mind and your heart in God's world as you deal with man's world, which is what keeps your nose clean and keeps you out of prison. Yeah. Okay? That's It's that serious. Because man's world will make you do some things if you just live by that. Because it's a lie. Uh -huh. Okay, so you got to stand on your own integrity. Like, for instance, think about this. Like I said, I've been doing this for 35 years. I've been dealing with other people's money for 35 years and ain't never stole a dime. Uh -huh. Okay, now, don't mean I had no hard times. I had some hard times, but I just have those hard times. Okay, because yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to put that out there. Okay, and I've I've been done wrong, but I ain't gonna do wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I mean. That's what that's how I'm unpacking that. Okay. You gotta stand on your integrity in this world, because if you don't, you'll become anything. Mm. Okay. I'm right. All it, this, it, 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 and, and, and let me let me let me take it all the way to this, and this is the word, especially to young people. If you think you're slick. And if you think you can skirt the rules, you're going to turn out to be something you don't really want to be. Uh -huh. Okay? Yeah. The rules are important. Those rules and that being good, quote, unquote, being good, not only protects other people, it protects you. Okay. It protects you. And so that's why spiritual teaching and staying abreast of that and staying with that and staying in God's world. That's what that's how we're saved. Because uh -huh. otherwise you'd be lost to the world. You'd be lost to the world. That's what I mean. And so that's what when I say it ain't fun, it ain't fair, that's what because that's what the world would do to you. If you don't keep on your square, as my brothers, my fraternity brothers say, if you don't stand on your square, you're gonna be lost. Uh -huh. So that's you know that's my take on that. And anybody want to press that a little bit? Pastor Pat, uh, Paul or Pastor McCoy? Uh, Herbert, rather. Well, I, I, I would say that, um, can you all hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. you good now. Good, good, good. I I, I agree with you on that fact that um, integrity is, a, is like a binding agent to your character. And a lot of us, a lot of people don't understand that the enemy always has a counter offer. Mm -hmm. And counter offer will be very, very, very sweet. Mm -hmm. It's just, as you said, it's an illusion. I, I, I take it to, to the movie I, used to, I, I would refer to um, called The Running Man. I don't know if you all remember this movie, The Running Man, had Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. Yeah, I, didn't, I, yeah I, can, I can't remember the movie, though, but go ahead. I remember, I remember the movie, but I don't remember the content. But go ahead. Basically, he was he was a he was supposed to be doing a obstacle course because he was a prisoner and he was supposed to do this obstacle course to save his life. Now, at the end of the obstacle course, he was told that they were going to get, he was going to have this utopia. He was going to go to this island. He was going to get free, and everything was going to be wonderful. Mm. When he finally got to the east, he saw the truth. That he was not going to be free. He was going to be killed, like the others that they had betrayed this uh, this illusion. And I think that's as you're saying, don't fall for the illusion mm -hmm. that this world gives you. That everything's going to be fine. All you got to do is what you got to do. And a lot of these young young bucks out here that play that very very loosely. What well, man? I got to do what I got to do. But you mm -hmm. know. 
know what the cost of, of that choice will bring. Right. And as one one pastor, Pastor Mark, came to me some time ago, which is very true, choices that you make, the consequences of those choices, you can't choose. And so I, I like I said, I stand with you on that, that to say, you know what, the world is not fair. The world is not going to give you what you think it's going to give you freely. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and and if we knew that in 20, we were really just standing on that, yeah, life would be possibly different for all of us. Then again, who knows? I'm gonna add something to that too. Uh, now let's turn around and look at the world of God, which we inhabit every day as we inhabit the world of man. And the world of God is a beautiful world. It's almost like you have to fight the fight of the world of man to maintain the world of God that you have, to, to get to enjoy that. Everything we really work for is to enjoy God's world. The world is uncorrupt. The world is that's natural to the extent that we start dealing with our diet and so we start rejecting artificial types of foods you, you see what i'm saying i mean this to that's this is the way i see it so there is a we inhabit two worlds in a sense we inhabit a world of politics and graft and all these things and ambition okay? And we inhabit a world that's given to us naturally, okay? And that wakes us up in the morning. If we eat the right things, we live a long life, okay? So we got those two things, and you got to fight for that one. And then you have access to, uh, to to the spirit and things that really fill you. So those are the things that keep you going. So you can, Monday morning you can go and deal with this crazy stuff. You know, you know what I'm saying? Think about it. So when people get caught up in the world of man, they can be rich and they kill themselves. Okay, we just saw this. What was missing in those people's lives? You know, to, to say, I, I just, I don't want to do this no more. And you ain't struggling. It's people get up every day and struggle. So something got missed. You, you see what I mean? Something got lost in what, they, what their experience was, you know? Well, I, I'll just say this. Um, the struggle that they, that they had was, was, not of, was not of this world, but it was a struggle that many, many have seen. But it's beyond, it's not the struggle with flesh and blood. Yeah, that yeah. was not the struggle. It was not a yeah. flesh and blood struggle. Yeah, and, and you were so right. A lot of us have these flesh and blood issues, but if we if we hold steadfast to God, right, we will realize that we don't sweat the small stuff because it just is because God has already provided. Right. Yet right. I understand what's going. On. It, 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 we we have to. What what I've got from what you're saying is to have a perspective of what's important. Right. Ah. Okay. Yes. And, and that's what I got. To have a true perspective of what's important. Yeah, it's good, as you say, it's good to get your money. It's good to do these things for your family. It's good to do all of that because we all do that. We have, we, we have to have something that is greater than all. Mm -hmm. We have yeah. to press towards a mark that's greater than what than what this world provides. The Absolutely. illusion that this world provides. I got what you're saying. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, now at this point, at this point, we're going to uh, get ready to close the uh, video portion of, of tonight. Um, and we're going to go into the con conference call. So before we get off of the video and get on uh, Facebook, um, I, I want to give, I mean, get off Facebook and get on the conference call. I, I want to give you, uh, uh, Mark Crumble, an opportunity to, to just express um, um, some some characteristics, three give three characteristics as quickly as you can to explain to us what you think a man, a father, ought to be in this world uh, that we live in right now. Three yeah. characteristics. Three characteristics. 
integrity, character, honesty. Those are two, one thing. And love. Okay. And yeah. with integrity, I'm a integrity slash strength. Uh -huh. Those things. So integrity and strength, uh, character, and love. And love. Okay. Okay. Well, Facebook, right now, we're going to end right there on, on that thought. And and uh, we're going to go into overtime on the conference call. So if you will, please uh, call into the conference call, 619-639-4733. Again, 619-639-4733. And uh, we'll open up the lines and you can ask questions on the conference call directly to uh, uh, Mark Miles or to any of us that's on this panel. So Facebook, we love you. And, and we just want to say a simple prayer as we get ready to close the Facebook uh, uh, session. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this opportunity for, for men to come together and have a conversation about being men, about being fathers, about being a child of God. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Now, bless those that are listening, those that's going to hear this recording later. Bless them to step up to the plate and be the man that they're supposed to be to their wives and to their children, to be the men that they're supposed to be for their community and this world, and most importantly, to be the man that knows how to glorify God and God alone. We thank you, Lord. We praise you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Facebook, good, good night, Facebook. If you want to join us in the overtime period, we got several people on, and people have already started hitting their number one key. Join us at 619-639-4733.